Welcome to our lecture online. We're going to do the same problem we did in the last video with one difference. In this case, our pulley now does have mass, which means it has a moment of inertia, considering it to be a solid disk. It is equal to 1 half mr squared. So let's go ahead and work out the same problem we did before with that slight change. We need to find the kinetic energy of the system, which means both m1 and m2 have kinetic energy, but the disk will have kinetic energy as well. That means the kinetic energy, which can be written as T, is equal to 1 half the mass, m1, times its velocity squared, and that would be x dot squared, plus 1 half m2 x dot squared, even though this is in the opposite direction. Remember that we meant the positive x direction to be down, the, the negative x direction is up, so we need to have a negative sign there for, it, for an upward velocity, plus the kinetic energy of the disk is going to be one half the moment of inertia, defined over here, times the angular velocity squared. Now remember that the angular velocity by definition is equal to the velocity divided by the radius, which means omega squared can be defined as the velocity squared divided by the radius. In this case, the velocity would be equal to x dot over r. We can plug that in here. We end up with the kinetic energy equal to 1 half m1 x dot squared plus 1 half m2 x dot squared plus 1 half times the moment of inertia 1 half the mass times r squared, and omega can be written as v over r, and or x dot over r, so it's x dot squared divided by r squared, instead of omega squared. Now we can simplify things a little bit. We have an r squared here, and an r squared there. 1 half times 1 half is a quarter, which means we get kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m1 x dot squared, plus one half m2 x dot squared plus a quarter times the mass of the pulley times x dot squared. So now we have an equation expressing the kinetic energy of all three items in the Atwood machine, the two masses and the pulley. Now we're ready to find the potential energy. The potential energy, which can also be written as V, is equal to and we're going to do it in reference to the ceiling. We're going to call that potential energy at the ceiling equal to zero. So we'll have negative potential energies minus m1g times the distance x minus m2g times the distance l minus x. And this can then be written as minus m1gx minus m2gl plus m2g times x. And there's the equation for the potential energy of the system. Now we can write the Lagrangian because L is equal to the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy, which is equal to 1 half m. And let's see here, we can actually um, pull out an x dot squared. So we have 1 half m1 plus 1 half m2 plus a quarter times the mass of the pulley, all multiplied times x dot squared. So it makes it a little bit easier. Then minus the potential energy, minus this quantity right here. So one way to, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and write it like this so it's easier to see. So m1gx minus m2gl plus m2gx. When you work with the Lagrangian, you always have to be very careful about the signs here. So now let's go ahead and get rid of parentheses. The Lagrangian can be written as the quantity 1 half m1 plus 1 half m2 plus 1 quarter, the mass of the pulley, times x dot squared minus m1gx plus m2gl minus m2 g x. So now we apply the negative sign. Notice, hmm, let's see here, potential energy. Oh, I'm missing a negative sign. Got to be careful. Minus times a minus. So I have a minus, a minus, 
and a plus here, and then, then this becomes a plus, a plus, and a minus. All right, see, there again, we have to be careful about the signs. Now we can go ahead and take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. If we do that, this whole thing goes to zero. We have two surviving terms, and this goes to zero as well. We end up with m1g minus m2g, which can be written as m1 minus m2 there we go, times g. Taking the partial of L with respect to x dot, so the partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to, notice that this term, this term, this term goes to zero. This is the only surviving term. We take the coefficient here, which is one half m1 plus one half m2 plus a quarter times the mass of the pulley multiplied times the derivative of this. So we take the two, move it in front, and we have that x to the first power, x dot to the first power. And we multiply everything times 2. So let me go ahead and put the 2 in front. Of course, that will cancel out to 1 halves, and that will make that into a 1 half. So let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to m1 plus m2 plus a half times the mass of the pulley times x dot. Okay, finally, what we can do now is take the time derivative of that quantity the derivative with respect to time of the partial of L with respect to x dot, and I should have had a dot there. That's the dot right there. I did not miss the dot. There we go. That is equal to, so if I take the time derivative of this, I end up with m1 plus m2 plus 1 half times the mass of the disk times x double dot. So now I have this quantity right here, and I have this quantity right here. Now I'm ready to take those two and plug them into the equation right here. So the left side is equal to this. It ends up with m1 plus m2 plus 1 half times the mass of the disk times x double dot minus this quantity right here. So minus that, so minus m1 minus m2 times g is equal to zero, oh, so we don't get confused. All right, now what I can do is move this to the other side. m1 plus m2 plus one half mask of this times x double dot is equal to m1 minus m2 times g. And finally, when I take this and divide it over here, we end up with x double dot, the acceleration, is equal to m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 plus one half the mask of the disk times acceleration due to gravity. So there's our equation of kinematics of the Atwood machine now with the disk or with the pulley having mass. Another way to write it is to say the acceleration is equal to the quantity m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 plus half the mask of the pulley, times g. So if you like that better, so x double dot really means acceleration. Again, we assume the acceleration is in, this, is in this direction. Notice that we use generalized coordinates, where in the down direction we call that a positive direction. The acceleration is equal to this quantity divided by this quantity. Notice that since m1 is bigger than m2, this is positive. This is positive. We assume g to be a positive 9.8 meters per second square which means acceleration is in this direction in our coordinate system that's considered positive direction. So the signs match and the answers matches the assumed direction. And that's how we use the Lagrangian to solve for an Atwood machine where the pulley has mass.